Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm looking at some racing techniques. We're looking at how we treat gates and flags differently whereas actually we can start to think of them as being quite similar uh, and I'm also going to have a look at the dive gate and give you a different technique for flying the dive gate than we've shown before in previous videos. So if we just do a quick cruise of this track that I've made up it's basically a big circle uh, three flags and three gates and the idea of this is to show how we treat gates and flags very differently but in fact we can treat them in a more similar way uh, than rather than treating them differently and that will give us a faster line so if we talk about flags to begin with the way most people fly flags is to fly as close to the flag as possible because certainly on a, a course like this the closer I fly to those flags the tighter my line is the less distance I'm flying and therefore I'm faster whereas if I start to swing out in this curve I'm now flying further and therefore I'm slower so with flags we tend to just take the view well you know the closer you get to the flag on a sweeping bend like this the better because that that is the fastest line now when it comes to flying gates on a curve like this the temptation is to do what we do with all gates which is to aim for the center of the gate and there's a reason why we normally aim for the center of the gate which is what I'm doing now and that is that that's the area where there is the most room around the quad it's the highest part of the of the gate and there is the most gap to either side so it is the safest part of the gate to hit however when you're flying a curve like this what tends to happen is you tend to end up getting thrown out so you you end up out towards the edges of of the gate like I'm flying it now because as you pick up speed you start to get some side slip and you end up like that hitting the outside of the gate you're aiming for the middle but you hit the outside leg on the gate so what I'm suggesting is that actually you treat the, the gate like a flag. So the inside leg of the gate, you just pretend that that's actually a flag. And you aim for the inside leg a little bit more. It means you've got slightly less height to play with. But by aiming for that inside leg, it means that if you're flying a bit faster, you actually, and you start to side slip out, it doesn't matter because you've basically plans to have that room to allow you to side slip out and you're also flying the fastest line through the gate the the shortest path between those two gates so that's the first tip is to think about gates particularly when they're on a sweeping bend like this think about the inside leg of the gate as being a flag instead and trying to cut that a bit closer and that gives you room to drift out if you're going a bit too quick and it's the fastest line through the gate okay so let's move on to the dive gate so in previous videos you'll have seen me showing this type of technique so you come up up above turn and then dive down through the gate uh, and I've shown you know that this is a way to kind of get your aim because you're using the presenting the bottom of the props to your direction of travel to slow you down and then dropping through the gate now in the sim this actually works reasonably well in real life it doesn't work so well and the reason it doesn't work so well in real life is is because of FPV cameras so in real life distances tend to get stretched more so I can do that actually so if I stretch the distance a little bit more by changing my camera field of view so. Uh, what we got here let's just uh, yeah so we go this way so if I go all the way up to 137 degrees field of view like that I've now got more stuff in view and if I come up here and look down you can see that the gate suddenly that dive gate suddenly looks really small so I'm getting up above it and now it's 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 actually a really hard target to hit I look like I'm higher up but in fact I'm not all that's happened is my 
field of view has changed and it just looks like I'm higher up and the gate just looks like it's a lot smaller whereas actually I'm the same height as I was before when my field of view was lower so this is the effect that you get on a real quad is that distances get stretched more like they are now and you can see this this dive gate gets much much harder to aim up on on hit because it it's effectively a smaller target or you look like you're higher than you you actually are and if you try this in the sim for yourself and set the field of view to 137 you'll suddenly think to yourself wow yeah and this this is it's quite hard to hit this this dive gate and that is the same effect you'll get in real life with an FPV lens is you'll get that distance stretching and the dive gate will look like it's really hard to hit so how do we combat this how do we fix this problem of the quad looking like it's higher than it is because of FPV lenses stretching the distance but still being able to attack this gate uh, and fly it at speed and the way we do that is by changing our approach to it so previously I've told you to fly up high like this and then try and drop in and you can see that it's really quite hard to do that with a wide field of view camera so the easier way to do it is actually to stay low and then just pop up as you get to the gate so you just stay really really low pop up and then you don't fly up as high at all so you're effectively minimizing that distance stretch and all of a sudden as you can see here this dive gate is now suddenly much much easier to make it through and all I'm doing is just staying low popping up and then flying back through it so just stay low pop up Oh, I've shot that one a little bit. But you can see each time I'm I'm managing to make the gate reasonably easy, even though my distance stretching is really quite large here, I'm still able to make this gate really quite easily just by staying close to it, just popping up, targeting and then coming back down. And because I'm not dropping very far, so I'm not very high above the gate, it's making it much easier to hit. Whereas if I go back to my way I was doing it before where you fly in higher you can see all of a sudden it's a big drop and you tend to hit the ground as you're coming through it because it comes up at you suddenly and it makes the whole thing much harder now if I change my field of view back again to uh, a more typical sim field of view so we come back down to 120 like that you can see that when you're up here it doesn't actually look that small anymore and it's now easy to hit again and this is all the effects of camera perspective you can still hit the floor because you're dropping down quite quickly from that from that height into the gate so you've got to be careful of that still but it's a less effective way of flying and this field of view or distance stretching that you get with FPV cameras does make using this particular technique of flying high and then just turning above it and dropping in really quite difficult in real life but as I say the combat to it is just stay low pop up and the gates just stays the hole stays close to you if you do this you know you're minimizing your, your height gain and even though I'm flying through this gate the wrong direction it's still easy to hit if I come this way it'll be a bit easier if I pop up I can then come back down through it but you can see it makes it much easier just staying low and then just popping up for the gate and if I put the field of view back up again and mimic an FPV type lens which incidentally I mean, I've only gone to 137 and FPV lens is normally about 150 degrees field of view so you can see how this gets exacerbated in in real life with a real FPV camera now you just you can still hit that gate but because you're staying low you're not getting way up above it and then and then making it look like it's a little tiny gate that you're trying to hit uh, and that's the technique for making it through dive gates just stay low and then just pop up and make your way through it 
and it makes it a whole lot easier as I say in real life in the sim if you're running lower fields of view like we normally do which are the 120s then you can still use the previous technique and it'll work fine but it doesn't transfer very well across to real life and real FPV lenses okay that's it I'll see you on the next video